There's no theatres in heaven, said Crowley, and very few films. Don't you try to tempt me, said Aziraphale wretchedly. I know you, you old serpent. Just you think about it, said Crowley relentlessly. You know what eternity is. You know what eternity is. I mean, do you know what eternity is? There's this big mountain, see, a mile high, at the end of the universe. And once every thousand years, there's this little bird. What little bird? said Aziraphale suspiciously. The little bird I'm talking about. And every thousand years, the same bird every thousand years. Crowley hesitated. Yeah, he said. Bloody ancient bird then. OK, and every thousand years, this bird flies, limps, flies all the way to this mountain and sharpens its beak. Hold on, you, you can't do that. Between here and the end of the universe, there's loads of... The angel waved a hand expansively, if a little unsteadily. Loads of bugger all, dear boy. But it gets there anyway, Crowley persevered. How? It doesn't matter. It could use a spaceship, said the angel. Crowley subsided a bit. Yeah, he said, if you like. Anyway, this bird, only it is the end of the universe we're talking about, said Aziraphale. So it'd have to be one of those spaceships where your descendants are the ones who get out at the other end. You have to tell your descendants. You say, when you get to the mountain, you've got to... He hesitated. What, what, what have they got to do? Sharpen its beak on the mountain, said Crowley. And then it flies back in the spaceship and after a thousand years, it goes and does it all again, said Crowley quickly. There was a moment of drunken silence. Seems a lot of effort just to sharpen a beak, mused Aziraphale. Listen, said Crowley urgently. The point is that when the bird has worn the mountain down to nothing, right, then... Aziraphale opened his mouth. Crowley just knew he was going to make some point about the relative hardness of birds' beaks and granite mountains and plunged on quickly. Then you still won't have finished watching The Sound of Music. Aziraphale froze. And you'll enjoy it, Crowley said relentlessly. You really will. My dear boy, you won't have a choice. Listen, heaven has no taste now, and not one single sushi restaurant. A look of pain crossed the angel's suddenly very serious face. I can't cope with this while I'm drunk, he said. I'm going to sober up. Me too. They both winced as the alcohol left their bloodstreams and sat up a bit more neatly. Aziraphale straightened his tie. I can't interfere with divine plans, he croaked. Crowley looked speculatively into his glass and then filled it again. What about diabolical ones, he said. Pardon? It's got to be a diabolical plan, hasn't it? We're doing it. My side. Ah, but it's all part of the overall divine plan, said Aziraphale. Your side can't do anything without it being part of the ineffable divine plan, he added with a trace of smugness. You wish? No, that's the... Aziraphale snapped his finger irritably. The thing. What do you call it in your colourful idiom? The, the line at the bottom. 
the bottom line. Yes, it's that. Well, if you're sure, said Crowley, no doubt about it. Crowley looked up slyly. Then you can't be certain, correct me if I'm wrong, you can't be certain that thwarting it isn't part of the divine plan too. I mean, you're supposed to thwart the wiles of the evil one at every turn, aren't you? Aziraphale hesitated. Uh, there is that, yes. You see a while, you thwart. Am I right? Broadly, broadly. Actually, I do encourage humans to do the actual thwarting because of ineffability, you understand. Right, right. So all you've got to do is thwart. Because if I know anything, said Crowley urgently, it's that the birth is just the start. It's the upbringing that's important. It's the influences. Otherwise, the child will never learn to use its powers. He hesitated, at least not necessarily as intended. Certainly our side wouldn't mind me thwarting you, said Aziraphale thoughtfully. They won't mind at all. Right, it'd be a real feather in your wing. Crowley gave the angel an encouraging smile. What will happen to the child if it doesn't get a satanic upbringing though, said Aziraphale. Probably nothing. It'll never know. But genetics, oh, don't tell me from genetics. What have they got to do with it? Said Crowley. Look at Satan, created as an angel, grows up to be the great adversary. Hey, if you're going to go on about genetics, you might as well say the kid will grow up to be an angel. After all, his father was really big in heaven in the old days. Saying he'll grow up to be a demon just because his dad became one is like saying a mouse with its tail cut off will give birth to tailless mice. No. Upbringing is everything. Take it from me. And without unopposed satanic influences, well, at worst, hell will have to start all over again and the earth gets at least another 11 years. That's got to be worth something, hasn't it? Now Aziraphale was looking thoughtful again. You're saying the child isn't evil of itself, he said slowly. Potentially evil, potentially good too, I suppose. Just this huge, powerful potentiality waiting to be shaped, said Crowley. He shrugged. Anyway, why are we talking about this good and evil? They're just names for sides. We know that. I suppose it's got to be worth a try, said the angel. Crowley nodded encouragingly. Agreed, said the demon, holding out his hand. The angel shook it cautiously. It'll certainly be more interesting than saints, he said. And it'll be for the child's own good in the long run, said Crowley. We'll be godfathers, sort of, overseeing his religious upbringing, you might say. Aziraphale beamed. You know, I'd never have thought of that, he said. Godfathers. Well, I'll be damned. Ah. It's not too bad, said Crowley, when you get used to it.